Well, as R gets bigger, as we get radially further and further away from our dipole, some of the terms in these three expressions are going to be decaying a lot faster than others. And if we're quote unquote far enough away from a Hertzian dipole, that is in the far field of the antenna, the one over R squared and one over R cubed terms can even be ignored completely because they're gonna decay a lot faster than the one over R terms. So that means we can disregard this one, both of the terms for ER and also these two terms. So ER is even in the far field is going to be equal to zero. So here are the full expressions from the previous slide. They, ho they hold for any R value, any distance from the antenna. But if we're gonna assume that R is greater than a wavelength, the higher order terms go away. And we're just going to wind up with these simplified expressions. You might recognize that these, field, these fields uh, constitute a plane wave. Since the magnetic field is related to the electric field by the intrinsic impedance of the material, and the fields also only change in the direction of propagation. In other words, if we're far from the antenna in terms of wavelengths, we only have the E theta and the H phi components, and they locally look like a plane wave propagating away from the antenna. We had talked about that earlier, and now we can see how we've derived expressions that prove it. This figure illustrates the electric fields radiated in the far field by a Hertzian dipole. And the radiated electric field in the far field here is oriented in the theta direction, or down, up or down. And the maximum radiation is also horizontally away from the antenna. When theta is 90 degrees, so that sine theta is equal to one, a maximum. So far we've been talking about a Hertzian dipole, but the Hertzian dipole is non-physical because it's too short. It's shorter than we could physically construct, so it's idealized. For example, we assumed the current is constant over its length and its width. For our application of destroying tumors inside of a human body, let's use the radiated fields for a Hertzian dipole and use those to help us figure out the radiated electromagnetic fields from other, more realistic antennas. Let's stick with a dipole antenna for now, but consider a slightly longer and more physically realizable dipole. In this case, the dipole is still short, electrically short, but we'll consider a more realistic current distribution, a triangular current distribution, drawn out here. Use our solution that we obtained earlier for a Hertzian dipole, which is given right here, and spend a minute thinking about how you would calculate the far fields from this short antenna with a triangular current distribution.